Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome to Good Goal or Bad Defending, Severe Against Roma Edition. The goal of my channel is to draw on my 20 plus years of coaching experience at all different levels and try to teach you something that uh, you're not going to get on the mainstream, you know, like the truth. So uh, here we are today. We're looking at Severe um, with uh, our boy, um, oh, boy Jose Mourinho getting into another uh, final to chuck it away. But uh, Roma played well quite, quite all season, but Sevilla's just got this knack of winning the Re uh, Europa League, I can't even say it. So let's have a look at what's going on here. What's happened is the ball's been lumped forward from a defender, and every time that happens and your strikers don't hold it up, you're, you're always in this sort of um, uh, uh, problem that this can happen. So let's look at this first goal and see, right, as the ball gets dropped down, Bosch gets into this middle midfield battle, battle here. Doesn't seem anything... Uh, important really happening. Everyone seems to be okay. Uh, you can see this striker. Oh, God, I love strikers because I used to play up front. Um, he's already off. He's, he expects this guy to win the ball, and he's already making a run for the goal. Brilliant. Well played, buddy. Um, yeah, but that's not what's going to happen here. Let's just watch what goes on. Bit of a bouncing ball. Terrible. He's got complete control here, right? So the um, severe midfielder here has got control of the ball. It's what he does now determines what happens next does he put the ball under control and if you if you look if he's smart the first thing he does is try to get it there he's facing that way he can get it straight to this guy and everything's going to be good does he do that let's have a little watch no he tries to be clever and turn right so as he tries to be clever and turns and maybe because if if he was a good enough player and he's running and he saw that striker running maybe he wanted to turn and release that striker straight away instead of doing what i would have wanted him to do do that and have that guy do it instead and that would have been perfect but he tried to get a bit clever try to think that he's getting pulled over or there's a foul going on none of the sort happening whatsoever so roma carry on playing and this is what happens next picks the ball up he's still complaining instead of playing the football that's why you know he's bad at the football so uh, all of a sudden Roma's now got the ball. Sevilla's really not really paying that much attention because, quite frankly, they're still... Look, look at these guys. They're all still yelling around at the referee. Look, all, play the game, boys. Play the game. Through ball straight the way through in this big gaping hole here because there's too much space between the uh, right back and centre back. That seems to be coming a common myth. Uh, sorry, myth. A common theme as well in the modern game is that the right backs and the left backs are getting... Um, too high and too far early and they're leaving those gaps and the uh, defensive midfielder ooh, just uh, it's too difficult to cover both sides you can't on on a transition play like this so as the ball comes through bosch and he tucked it away it's a good finish to be honest it's a really good finish let's have a look at that complaining moaning baby midfielder in the middle of a minute I love this camera angle. It shows how bad he is at the football right now. So like, all he needs to do is play it to that guy. He can see him. He can just header it to him. He can get out of this trouble here and they can keep the possession and go. But he thinks he's a little bit better than he is. He tries to turn the ball and he loses it. Now, here's the problem. There's a coming together there. That turn is always going to end up because what he's done, uh, if, I, if you've watched my videos before, I'll explain it. When you've got the box, right, and he's in this half. And the ball's over here. So this guy in this half is always going to end up with the ball because he's turned it past this the middle point here, if you understand me. When I run my coaching courses, I explain it much better because I'm trying to do it here in, in a couple of seconds. So um, just not laying it back there has caused this goal to happen. But uh, yeah, great angle, great view here. And he thinks because this guy's pulling him down, he, look, he, he tries to say he's pushing him back, but he hasn't. To be honest, if anything, he's actually the severe foul uh, player's probably foul the Roma player. Ah, but we digress. Let's carry on. I want you to have a little look at what how big that gap is here. From this angle, you can see what I'm what I'm on about. How big that is and how small that is. How close those two are there because there's a striker, which is the right thing to do. But there's another player that was sneaking in coming up here. And this right back was too far forward. Now, to be honest, if he was close enough, he might have been able to put in a challenge. He wasn't going to win the ball, but he might be able to put the striker off so he didn't have such a clean finish. But other, like you, you, you can just tell. That guy's gone too far forward. You've always got to, like, it's interesting because people think so differently on the game. If that ball's bouncing in midfield, I'm trying to get my uh, left and right back to squeeze in because I have a feeling my idiot on the ball is going to lose it. You know and it depends on who the idiot on the ball is. In this case, he did lose it and I would have been correct. But uh, I can understand going for it in a cup final and trying to push on. But yeah, uh, let's get on to the last goal. Here we are on the equalising goal. They haven't really done much. All they've done is just kept possession. Bounce the ball about, 
got to this guy out here. He's completely got no pressure on him. Does he mean, need to be marked? No, but he needs someone to be able to put pressure on him pretty quickly. And that doesn't really happen. If you look in the middle, that's nah, kind of fine. There's 2v1 there. Yeah, that's fine. 1v1 there. Look, he's too far away. We're all happy with that. That's not bad, really. We're all quite happy there. Let's see what happens as it plays out. Let's stop there. Let's just jump in. Okay. Before this guy goes to whip the ball in, let's see if we can see what happens here. Bosch, here we go. That's what I'm looking for. So front post, it's kind of taken out of the way, but we've got this melee of people here, and the ball hasn't really been put into a dangerous zone, but it kind of has, right? So that kind of it's a bit of an oxymoron. How's he put it in somewhere that isn't isn't dangerous? Well, it isn't dangerous if the defenders are already back, waiting to clear this ball and knock this ball away. So when the ball comes in, it's easy for them to do. Oh look, they're just zooming in like a boomer. We'll get back out again, right? Um, if it's pulling back. Uh, so they're already here. They can get away uh, cleanly. But as they're running back, they're not really set. So that's why it's a dangerous ball, because the defenders were too far forward here, and now they're running back in. And then they end up, in turn, putting the ball in their own goal. Look, Bosch, Bomf, defender puts in his own goal, because they're running towards the goal instead of kicking away from it, which sounds so simple. If you're there early, you can turn away, and you can kick the ball away from the goal instead of running towards the goal. But there we go. It goes into penalties after that. And a severe win. I don't really do the penalties because, quite honestly, that, that breakdown of that isn't really worth watching. Um, but if you're interested in any of my coaching videos, have a little click or uh, leave a comment and tell me something you want me to do. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.